So actually plants have some of the biggest genomes that we know of. Like the lily genome, for example, is I think 10 times the size of the human genome. So plant genomes tend to expand over time. A lot of people might not realize that some of the oldest organisms on the earth are, are actually plants. So for example, the bristlecone pine, if you're ever out in the desert southwest, you'll see these plants, these pine trees that are all gnarled and they look like they're half dead, but there's still some, some leaves at the top. They've been alive sometimes 10,000 years. Well, there's a whole group, several different uh, families of plants that actually are able to eat animals. Venus flytraps, sundews, pitcher plants, for example. So they all live in places where there's very little nitrogen in the soil. Okay, and so plants have to have nitrogen just like the rest of us to grow because it's a major constituent of proteins. And so if they can't get it from the soil, they can't get it from the air, they're sort of stuck with eating animals. And so they've evolved strategies for catching and digesting animals. Cacti are really fascinating because they're able, to, they're able to store a lot of water. They've designed their bodies to basically trap and hold water, right? They don't have leaves. They've lost leaves completely because leaves are a you know, very uh, easy way to lose water. So they are just this big fat stem, right? And out in the desert, there are a lot of other organisms that would like to get a hold of that water because it's quite scarce. Um, and so if you don't have a you know, some sort of deterrent, you might get eaten by, by other animals. And so they've developed, instead of leaves, they have massive spines. So oftentimes plants use all sorts of, imagine, you know, all sorts of trickery in order to get the animals that pollinate them to come around, right? Whether it's a, a flower that smells like rotting meat or one that has some sort of sugary nectar in it, or in the case of orchids, you know, there are certain orchids that actually mimic the morphology of wasps, okay? So they look like a wasp. Wasps will come up and try to mate with them and actually pollinate them.